right. Peace and blessings, family. It is yours truly, Amar Mari. I am the founder of El Kebalon Unity Alliance. And I'm here on this evening with my good brother, Corey Legrand, and also Quick the Poet. These two gentlemen are going to be overseeing a phenomenal event on this weekend, June the 1st at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Plantation, Florida. And it's entitled, We Need a Break. We Need a Break. Uh, this is centered around the mental wellness of our men. As, as we all know, uh, we definitely have to deal with the root problem of our conduct. And it always stems from our mind. I would like to say this, and I'll be very brief. I believe that our issues run deeper than somebody just looking at us wrong, stepping on our shoe, brothers ready to pull out guns and wanting to fight. Okay, uh, you know, what are you doing in our neighborhood? All these things stem from being mentally unstable. It's deeper issues and we have to get to the root of this problem. Us killing one another, us stealing, robbing, selling each other narcotics, this must stop. And so today we bound together as brothers and we have a brother spearheading this movement by the name of Brother Corey Legrand. Brother Corey Legrand is the one who's overseeing it. Brother Quick, he is the host of this phenomenal event. I'm gonna turn it over to the facilitator of this event Brother Corey LeGrand. Brother Corey LeGrand, how you doing on this evening, King? Oh, man, I am truly blessed beyond measure, and I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome, my brother. So so talk to us, man. Tell us about the inspiration of, of this event, you know, and, and why is it so important for individuals to come to this event? And thirdly, what is the takeaway that you want the brothers to walk away with? Okay, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, well, I, I got I was inspired because of just the journey I had in life. Uh, I was not always the smartest kid in school. I found myself to be in a lot place in a lot of remedial courses. And in those remedial courses, I saw a lot of people that looked like me. And I was always confused by that. And just growing up, I always had the question, why, why, why? And growing up with uh, my parents that were baby boomers that were, you know, growing up through the civil rights movement, they always preached to me that you, know, you always gotta be your best. You always have to exceed all expectations because not nine times out of 10, you're the last to get hired and the first to get fired. So I've always been under that fear with that. But I always want to know why we had to do that. And because of that, you know, sometimes it leads us to the point where we're in competition with everybody, even our fellow brothers. And, and, and it, it shouldn't be that way. And I, and I watch the news every day. I'm sick and tired of us you know, seeing us on the news for something negative. And I feel like sometimes, the, not, most of the time, the media, the cameras come on or the lights come on because the world loves to see an angry black man. They don't like to see us happy. I don't see too much cameras come on when we're happy. I don't see things like when I'm, you know, spending time with my family and my son and, and doing those great things. I don't see that. But you won't miss me if I'm getting handcuffed and getting thrown in the back of the uh, squad car. You won't miss me if I'm on the uh, uh, sidewalk getting choked out for selling some cigarettes. You won't miss me if I'm leaving the corner store and I'm getting shot down by some random white dude that was in his feelings one day because he he's a scared, he's afraid of me. So it came from that. But again, I look back at myself and I look at my brothers and we go through a lot. And some of the things that we were dished out and given in life isn't fair. We wasn't, we didn't sign up for this, you know, and we're, we're told to be carriers of that. And we just carry that for so, so long. And it has to deteriorate us in the inside in our core. So I want to address it and I wanted to bring it forth for brothers. I mean, this event is for us and for our opportunity to find out like, yo, you're not on this race alone, man. We actually have more in common than we do in difference. So yeah, that's basically how I got here with that. Wonderful, man. So uh, with that being said, Brother Quick, talk to us, man, as you being the host, man. Sure. You know, we hope you're going to keep it live for everybody in the building. So, you know, talk to us about this event, man. Tell us why, you know, it's so important to you and, and why do you feel that there's a need for 
uh, such an event for our men within our community. Well, it's an honor to be on here with both of you all and all of the viewers out there across, uh, I guess you could say the globe, man. The social network thing is crazy. Um, best part about, I think, of what Corey is doing with his event is that it actually, it reaches out to a core when nobody has ever really, really just focused specifically on. Not in the aspect of things are going all wrong or things are going all right. It's like, hey, listen, this is a, I guess you can almost call it a, a, a mental and psychological challenge, a form of cancer to, for black men. And a lot of people ignore as a whole, you know, a lot of black men out here are, are challenged in life due to the fact that they don't even know how to say something is wrong with me. Something just as simple as that. Something is wrong. Everybody moving on this, this, this type of mindset, but something is off with me. And a lot of those details extend and stem from history. An example, if many black men and or most black men that I have at least come to find out and be speaking to and speaking about, um, taught to hear your, your, your normal commonalities. Um, don't tell, you know, you don't need to cry about hardly anything. You just need to deal with that. You don't need to be expressing all this love out here because, you know, it's not respected. It's not a good thing. You will never be taken seriously as a black man, as a man, because you out here loving too hard. You know, you got to, you know, to give respect, to get respect. Okay, well, there's a swing and balance to that. But a lot of people don't understand the underlying layer of that, what Corey is trying to reach to on here, you know, and his staff that, hey, beyond all that, no other questions don't really pop up. Well, a black man actually feels comfortable enough to go to household sources or outside sources to say, hey, this is what I have going on. Can somebody actually help me? You know, hey, I'm struggling with this. And I'm not talking in the financial sense. That's, that's normal life basics. I'm talking about this is what's going on in my head. And I'd like somebody to relate to what, what I'm feeling. But we have all, in most cases, and or in many cases, regardless of who we are as a whole, and yeah, it's different when it comes to parents, but society paints it as in, it's not cool to say, I need help and I need assistance, whether it's by small variation or large. I'm not saying every black man out here got problems and issues. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that every black man does have problems and issues that are processed differently. We're all expected to handle it in the same regard. And what I mean by that is, you just got to tough it through. Everything going to be okay. No, it's not going to always be okay. And what I mean by that is, sometimes we just need another helping hand, another ear, another person to sit there, another group, somebody that don't know us in that regard or knows us in that regard to where we are comfortable enough to express ourselves on that table of like, this is what's up. This event is literally going to circle in all those types of black men. And it's not, I repeat it, it's not just for black men. This is an understanding of the black man and how we feel and how we should express ourselves more. People ask for it all the time. Why y'all don't do this or why y'all don't say that? I'll make it simple for you. Come to the event on June 1st, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m and you will for the first time get a direct interaction and experience based on what Corey and them have put together to where you can literally get a chance to hear firsthand knowledge from those experienced with it outside looking in and those experienced with it on the inside. Not to mention just as a side note or early closing, Corey's even has it set up to where anybody on hand, and that's dumb, if you have the time, you have the opportunity, you can literally, as we speak at that moment, get direct contact and assistance. Where can you find it out? Tell me one event that has done that. I've been a part of hundreds of events, arguably thousands, and I've never seen one that on the spot said, you know what? If I ask my questions, can I talk to somebody? Because what tends to happen is, is that you go to all these events and you get all this great information. But then you have time to resonate and literally either 
say, you know what, I'm going to take advantage of what that brother Corey said and Quick the Poor and all these gentlemen at that event said, but you also have the opportunity to talk yourself out of it. Man, you know what? I ain't got time for that. I'm not going to go back for this. I'm not going to go back for that, not realizing that you may be just a very black man and person that we are talking about, that this is, this is a positive measure. It's not, I don't want anybody to get it wrong. It's not like people sitting there and it's going to be, you know, negative. It is very positive. Brother Corey is putting together, put together something incredible. And the positive part about it is, is nothing wrong with saying that something is wrong and or I'm having a challenge. Even more on the other end, what a lot of people don't realize is you admitting that or you be enough for these other black men. Y'all remember, y'all don't realize how powerful that can be. Maybe they want to ask you. Because the best part about it is all it really is, to, it takes one. Hey, brother, I had a challenge with this. Oh, yeah, brother, I did too. What can I do about it? Well, this is what I did. And that's what Corey's event is about. You get it all firsthand on Saturday. Definitely. And gentlemen, with that being said, too, those of you who are listening, uh, you're on Facebook. I provided the link in the header for the event. If you would like to attend, the only thing you have to do is click on that link so that you can get your seat. The doors are wide open, and most importantly, our ears and our hearts are and our arms are wide open for you because love is the superpower. We need this in the community, man. We've been Agreed. taught that expressing love for each other is, is infeminine. You know, you, you, you're you considered to be a homosexual. Uh, you know, Brother Corey, you know, you, you, you and I, we had a, a very powerful dialogue prior to this this uh this program right and you told me about a gentleman that you had an interface with uh that that began to speak to you man you know if you'd be so kind share just a snippet of that with us inclusive with how you know you also said that there is some shade thrown on us because we don't do uh things of commonality that a man, quote unquote, should be doing, man. You know, talk to us and tell us how that affects the psyche of, of our men. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so first and foremost, let me just lead off with this word, vulnerability. Vulnerability is a word that we always, as black men, we shy away from because we think vulnerability is weak. But in its pure essence, vulnerability is a the highest level of courage one can take. Vulnerability means I'm will, I don't know you, I'm willing to stand out here and show you all of me, inside and out, knowing that I might get my ass kicked. I might get rejected. You might not like me, but you know what? I don't care. I'm going to stand here anyway. That is a very, very, very strong gift to have. And a lot of us, we shy away from it because I truly believe we don't understand what vulnerability is. So with that being said, let me dive into my story. So I'm out here in San Antonio. I'm an hour behind. And yesterday I got to my hotel and I decided like, you know, instead of just coming here and watching TV, I'm just going to just go for a walk. I like to walk. I like to clear my mind. As I'm walking, a brother was coming down the opposite side of the street and yelled out to me. He's like, hey, yo, you from here? And initially I went into that mode like we all can. I know I see Quick over there shaking his head. So I'm ready. I'm, I'm preparing for something like, yo, where I'm from, somebody call you out like that. Yo, I got to get ready to rock. And I said, man, not in San Antonio, man. I'm too far from home. So anyway, I entertained the brother, said, no, nah, man, I'm not from here. And he was like, all right, cool. I'm just trying to get to the Alamo. And I'm like, oh, that's it? Oh, yeah, come on, let's go to the Alamo. So we start walking, and instantly he started sharing his story with me. And I was just really, like, taken back, because I'm like, yo, this man don't know me from, like, a hole in the wall. I'm just some random dude walking down the street. I showed him the Alamo. He was so appreciative, because he's never been, but he's read about it in books and everything. And I was like, well, I'm just happy to be here in this moment with you, brother. And what ended up happening after that, we ended up having some more dialogue. I found out later in the, in the discussion that he is really deeply depressed. He's a crip, 46 years old, in and out of jail. He lost his son in January. His son was murdered. Uh-oh. Let me say here. Hello? Am I still there? I can't hear nothing. 
You still here? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I got yeah, a phone call. Yeah, we can still hear you and everything. Okay, I'm sorry. And so so what ended up happening was, um, hold on. Let me uh, let this person know. Please, I'm on an interview right now. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> let me call. All right, so I'm sorry to disrupt my story, but like I was saying, um, the brother was telling me he lost his he lost his uh his son in January. His son was mowed down, y'all. He was hit in the face with a pistol six times, shot in the face, and got his forearm severed off. He found his son that way, and I've never ever want to experience that pain of bearing my child. But I can only imagine how what it went through. But the thing that stuck with me most was as he started to tell his story, his emotions started to peel open, and he started to like cry profusely. Here again, you don't know me, man, but you're in your most vulnerable state. You're more courageous than I could ever be as a man, okay? And he kept saying that he actually got to a point where he wanted to kill himself because he had nothing else to live for. And I told him, I said, brother, if you do that, you take all this away from this power that you're giving me. You're taking all this with you. And that's unfair. I said, we need you here more than anything. And I said, you got to get your story out because it's, it's crazy. So shout out to Chris Wagner for sharing that story with me. But like I said, the thing that stuck with me most was the fact that this brother said, my son died because of the advice I gave him. I trained him what to do in a situation where, he was conf where he's confronted and how he should handle that. And he did right, but he lost his life. So now Chris has to live the rest of his life dealing with that and it's, he's in deep peril y'all and, and he's not the only man around here that's dealing with this stuff but we got to get a, a we got to clear this whole thing of vulnerability vulnerability is not weakness vulnerability puts you higher than anything any human being out here if you ask me so i just i just i'm glad you gave me the opportunity to share that story because i know in my core there are brothers out there there's mothers out there that that need to hear that and that are probably agreeing with what, what's being said. Powerful, powerful. So that being said, gentlemen, anything you have to say in closing remarks, uh, Brother Quick? Uh, myself, I would definitely like to uh, tell everybody, we appreciate y'all listening in. Again, this is for everybody. Yes, it's centering around the, uh, the mental state of black men, but this this is understanding is for everyone, you know, so all are definitely invited. If you would, please go to the link information, grab yourself a ticket. Um, it is first come, first serve, and Lord knows so many people have grabbed tickets already for it. So it's it's a beautiful thing. So please come out, support a good cause. Like 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 Brother Corey has said from earlier, remember, we spend a lot of time on these social networks and in life in general, seeing a lot of the negativity that is supported. Why don't for you know for once in a million times, why don't we do something unique? Why don't we all show up for something that is expected? from the world and that's been asked for. And this young man, he's creating an amazing platform for it. And we pull in and we flood the Broward Regional location so that we, it's, it's in the name of good. It's in the name of good, it's for all of us. Let's do that together. Absolutely. Brother Corey, you have any closing remarks? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the big thing about the most important thing because I'm seeing people on your timeline asking uh, questions. So how to get to the event is at the West Regional Library. It's off of Broward Boulevard going west on Broward before you get to Pine Island. So it's over there by the Broward Mall. It starts at two o'clock and to, to goes to four. It is a free event, but we are asking brothers to please go on Eventbrite and register. We definitely want to keep in contact with you moving forward. Yes, this event is we're driving you to do something today. Don't just attend another workshop saying, yeah, that was dope. We want you to actually let's start doing something. And, and if that's not you, I guarantee there's a brother there who or a brother you know that might need assistance. Be that vessel for that brother. You know, if you see something that he's not doing right, hold him accountable. Make him be a better man. Like I said on my podcast, I, I do have a podcast called Break Time that airs on SoundCloud. A better you, a better me makes us a better we. And that's the way it ought to be. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate you. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, brothers, as each gentleman so eloquently has stated, you know, being transparent brings about transformation. So 
Uh, I can tell you that I myself personally in closing have went to go see a psychiatrist. I have no problem with, with mentioning that. I don't feel weak. I don't Definitely. feel less than a man. In fact, I would have to say it was therapeutic. And to be frank with you, it actually kept me from exploding like a volcano yep. on innocent people. Because some of us would lash out, you know, some of us, you know, we're, we're taking out things on innocent people because we right. are containing these things inside of us. It is your only releasing the All right. So with that, with that being said, you know, uh ensure that, that you come on now on this weekend, man. Let's let the healing begin. Okay. Uh, you know, you're you're not less than a man, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, you're still a man. You know, you're not weak, okay? Um, you're not vulnerable, okay? No, none of these brothers on this platform, and I'm quite sure the men that's going to be out there on, on this weekend, I promise you this, there'll be no man there that's going to look down on you, all right? We're just, we're just going to lend you a helping hand to help you up, brother. You know, we are our brother's keeper. So, you know, from all three of us, man, listen, man, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Listen, there, there, there's a better you awaiting for you on the other side. You know what I'm saying? There's a king in you. You know what I'm saying? Your queen is waiting for you to rise. Your children is waiting for you to rise. Our nation is waiting for you to rise. Be there. I want to see you there. Come on out, man. Let's do it together. Peace, love, and power.